so for tonight's Q and A for Miracle Club, we are very fortunate to have Thaddeus O'Sullivan, the filmmaker who brought it to life. Thank you for being with us tonight, Thaddeus. You're uh, welcome. Uh, so as um, as an Irish American, I was a uh, very uh, I don't know. Uh, it was an intense viewing experience for me. Um, I was, uh, you know, um, granted we're in much um, kinder, more understanding and enlightened times than yeah. I guess um, 19, I guess when things came to pass, the well, the instigating events, I was thinking about this before our call started, the instigating events presumably would have been in the mid to late 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to do the math on yeah how old some yeah. of the characters were supposed to be. So, so really, even well before the 1967 setting of, of the events as we see unfolding. So, so then I guess early 20s, late 20s. So, um, um, so yeah, it's really even even though it's quite um quite a different world we live in today. Thank God. Um, you know, I did feel and see echoes of uh, familiar faces and familiar attitudes in some of the characters. And I think old, old, yeah. old, old habits die hard. So um, so anyway, so given the period setting of the film and, and uh, you know, it's, I think quite an interesting um, setup that you have, you're really dealing with in the, in the course of the film, like the aftermath of, of the big events, the... Yeah expulsion of Laura Linney's character, the, the events that were triggered by Kathy Bates and Maggie Smith. So um, I'm curious what your view was on how to, you know, as a filmmaker, how how you looked at um, addressing that sort of, uh, like you, you were presenting the ripple effects of something. The ripple effects, exactly. I think that's that's the thing that was most uh, most interesting uh, for me because it made it more of a puzzle. Uh, mm -hmm. Trying to uh, uh, how much of the background to bring forward, right? Uh, how to present it, when to present it, because uh, mm -hmm. when you're relying on the backstory like that, there's always the danger of too much exposition. You know, right. somebody has to explain. Uh, what happened, and, and uh, I want the audience. Uh, so the, the, the puzzle uh, is is a is a drip feeding the audience, keeping them just interested enough in uh, uh, why people are are how they are, and giving them just a little bit of information during the mm -hmm. course of the of the storytelling, and uh, uh, until uh, I guess until the Maggie Smith uh, confession, really, and the mm -hmm. the, the bath uh, set up. Where she finally, uh, you know, confesses uh, in the search for forgiveness. Right. Um. So uh, that's it's hard to do, uh, and uh, uh, because, as I say, there isn't that much background story told. You know, you just get uh, little uh, hints of things, and uh, and then. Um, I hope you achieve this. Just that that sense that um, just when an audience is saying, "What is this about? Uh, uh, why is she like this? Uh, how are we? Where we are?" Uh, you drop in a piece of information, mm -hmm. uh, and that spurs the audience on to the next, the next. Uh, 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 oh, I get it. You know, right, right. And so they 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 come to characters. With uh, um, you know, just la layers, just peeling away layers of a character until you get to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and then um, so uh, that's what anybody would try to do with with storytelling. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, you, you describe it really well with the uh, the metaphor of the drip feed. You know, giving just enough to sustain. But I think you know when when the when the information is shared in that increment, you know, very deliberate incremental way, as opposed to, you know, exposition or spoon feeding, you know, I think it's much more satisfying for the audience when, when that reveal does come um, or, or the, you know, the various reveals um, over the course of the film. Uh, but I, th I thought there, there were, you know, structurally, 
Um, you know, some very interesting choices made in the film. You know, a, a you know, like I said, the, the the whole film is a study in ripple effects, and um, you know, some of them deeply tragic, um, and then you know, some offering a chance for redemption. But um, but then also. Yeah. You know the, the 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 way you deploy the information over the course of the film, I thought was quite interesting. Um, so, you know, also contemplating the um, sort of the period nature of the film, and that you know, as I would say, you know, I think that we live in um, much more um, you know subject subjective view, of course, and more enlightened times. Um, and you know, something I think about when I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm also a, in my day job, a film buyer, you know, I often ask, you know, why this film now? Um, you know, so I'd be curious to hear your, your view on that question and, you know, what you think um, a story that, you know, a very intense and quite heartbreaking story like this one can tell us today. I think uh, um, uh, the, uh, the I, I think the, concept of uh, of intolerance uh, to that degree uh, resulting in the banishment of the um, Laura Linney character I think is very interesting uh, and uh, and as you say the, the ripple effect from that is endless uh, uh, from that kind of um, ignorance mm -hmm. uh, really and um, how much is the church involved uh, how much is it a, a, a cultural thing? How responsible were the women uh, in the in, in not understanding, you know, how better and how to deal with the situation, um, and uh, and all of that is just a myriad of uh, of questions and responsibilities and um, and and you know, for me, uh, I guess um, I grew up in Ireland in the, uh, in, the in the same period. Uh, not the twenties, right? <laughs> uh, but in the period the film is set, I'm old now. That I'm old. In the period the film is set, uh, I, that that was that's my period, really. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, so uh, I know that I know the culture uh, of the period, and I know um, also I, I know about the the about the intolerance. But also uh, about the skepticism on behalf of some that some people have as well about the church, um, and um, so it wasn't all cut and dried. Right. Uh, there were uh, uh, people who were deeply religious people, but at the same time, they were um, uh, they wouldn't do everything the priest said. You know, they right. weren't they weren't uh, you know they enjoyed their freedom, their mental freedom. If I can put it that way. And right. uh, they wanted to feel uh, that that they had a life uh, beyond the church, because sometimes in that period uh, you could feel that that the church, which was everywhere, there was just no escaping it. They were they ran the institutions, they ran the schools, they ran the universities. Uh, uh, it was, you know, uh, Irish cultural life was uh, uh, sorry, Catholic cultural life was all around you. So I think for some. Uh, it was hard to um, extract themselves from that. Mm -hmm. So uh, all that was interesting to me. And um, as I say, because I grew up uh, in, the, in the midst of it. And um, But I also found uh, the, the film very funny. Uh, I found the characters very funny. And I found that their humour was um, a bit like the... My, my mother, who was very, my, my family were deeply religious. Uh, right. My mother could be quite skeptical, and uh, and uh, it, she would uh, she'd make jokes about the Pope and about mm -hmm. the local priest, and about, you know, and and about uh, yeah, about anything religious. But they didn't they didn't take that seriously. Um, that's why when when Maggie Smith looks up at the statue and makes some makes some some joke, uh, the statue of Our Lady and makes some joke, and then later on, you know, an hour later in the story. She's talking about something that's much more deeply felt. Uh, I really enjoy that contradiction in a character. Mm -hmm. uh, they can um, they can they can laugh at themselves, right? Uh, and and they, because they can they can laugh at, you know, they've spent 50, 60, 70 years of their lives, um, you know, looking at a statue with Jesus hanging from the cross, and they can make a joke about it as well, right? Um, yeah. But that's not neither are who they are necessarily, right? Right. I mean that that sort of 
humor and you know humor in dark times is something I certainly uh, associate with Irish culture for sure. So um, so um, you know speaking of Maggie Smith, I mean she's uh, one of uh, you know your three extraordinary veteran actresses who are who are uh, you know um, vital to this film being as beautiful and touching as it is. Um, uh, how was it uh, landing them? Did you have a vision on, you know, were those your first picks and were you, uh, um, how hard did you have to chase them? Any interesting backstory on on their involvement oh, and how it came to be? Um, Maggie Smith and uh, was first attached a very, very long time ago before mm -hmm. I had anything to do with it. And uh, so, was, so was Kathy Bates. Uh, and uh, Laura Leaney came on during my period of development. Uh, and um, so I had no, so I just, I just worked with Kathy and, and uh, Maggie over the last uh, few years, showing them the, 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 the developing script uh, to see if they were still on board, if they liked it, if they, they liked the way things were going. And, um, and, uh, and then uh, uh, we brought, we brought um, Laura on. So, um, you know, surprisingly, uh, given that I inherited uh, uh, so much of this, uh, they are brilliantly well cast. Uh, I mean, the, uh, Maggie's character really? is is just quite fantastic, and uh, and so uh, she has that authority. She has that sense of um, of, a, of a leader in that mm -hmm. in that working class community. You would feel that she would be somebody that they would look up to, and she would be somebody that would say, "This is really horrible. What's happening here with the Chrissy character? You know, we need to do something about it." And you could you could you could feel her authority uh, throughout the years in that small mm -hmm. community, and uh, uh, Kathy's character uh, is um, is <laughs> is she's so busy looking after kids, you know, and and raising a family, uh, she hardly has time to sort of think. So the moment she she they open the door and let her out, she's like a you know she's like like a horse heading for home. She's just right. She's off for an right. experience, and uh, and uh, she's uh, the actor is absolutely clear about the model in her head, if I can put it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy was uh, a very you know very dedicated in the way that she approached uh, the whole thing, uh, the the character and and the journey and 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 the search for uh, her her miracle, uh, and she just dealt with it with such. Uh, immense uh, passion and uh, no um she wasn't in any sense grand and and i think it just suited that that rather befuddled character who really wants to just sort of get out there and get what she wants from the world right and uh, and and go home with it and and it doesn't work out like that and she has the imagine imaginative capacity to sort of to to accept that and um so she was beautifully cast, and Laura Laura Linney uh, was just perfect. So were there, were there any um, fun or interesting anecdotes about working with them? Were there um, any improvisers in the in your midst, or um, do they, you know, I think of Maggie Smith as such a cheeky, um, twinkle in her eye kind of a performer, and wonder if she, uh, you know. Well, uh, she's and tough, boss, you know. Yeah. She, 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 she's, she's tough, but at the same time, uh, she is, um, as they all are. Um, I, I've worked with a lot of actors over the years, obviously, and uh, uh, I, I've, so you know, I, I know how to be around actors, but you never know what to say to an actor, really, because they're all different. Right. Uh, they all require require different things, and so uh, my feeling is to. Um, uh, just have conversations really rather than have directorial instructions so I would treat them like a uh, like I've seen any actor and in, in in Maggie's case I think she felt that you know I needed to sort of um uh be a bit tougher on her because she probably felt I was I was a bit uh felt that I was working with a legend right you know? right and at one point she did say to me you know just tell me what to do mm -hmm. yeah. um Laura uh, is just one of the most uh, uh, easiest people to talk to. So uh, we talked a, a lot through the different different drafts, some which were working, some which weren't working. So we had a lot of conversations on Zoom. Uh, and um, 
she uh, has her own particular way of approaching uh, the arc of a character. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, and so that would be very defined, but at the same time, she could, um, she could change if uh, the environment, the, 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 the you know, uh, rehearsing with the other actors or the, or the location wasn't working in, in way that, some way that we'd all predicted, she was fantastically adaptable. Right. And uh, she always found a way to bring what, what it was that uh, intrigued her in the scene. She always had a way of, of uh, taking, even if things were changing, of getting a kernel of that, hanging on to something special mm -hmm. in that and, 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 and showing it. Um, uh, and that's quite complicated. Um, and um, uh, Kathy uh, was, was very much, um, uh, the sets were very detailed with the working class community and right. uh, we had a brilliant uh, design team and they were all the teams very good so she would go around the set and she would be touching everything and what's this doing what's that for because she uh, she has an Irish background but a long way back so she doesn't uh, there's certain things she wouldn't know about that we would talk to her about but, but she loved uh, you know she just loved feeling it uh, mm -hmm. the, the space and uh, what was in it and uh, the detail. Uh, so she got a big kick out of that. Right. And, uh, it really helped her as an actor. Uh, so I didn't have to do much there. There was a bit of a lot of work to do on accents, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all that, um, right. which are always problematic. And uh, everybody finds them difficult. And we, um, but uh, she worked incredibly hard on that. Uh, Maggie didn't have to work quite so hard on that because she played Irish parts many times on the stage. Right. Uh, and um, and Laura, we decided not to have an accent because she'd been away 40 plus years. Right. My experience of Americans, uh, American uh, Irish emigres in America is that uh, they, uh, in a true American way, they, to get on, you have to be American. Right. Uh, they lose their accents uh, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And so maybe not as uh, quite so much as the, as, the, as the Laura character, but um, I think it was a good decision to not to have her do an accent to-, to... Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think even if she had done one, it would probably only be, you know, a light one. Um, and then you'd be debating the matter of the degree and, you know, how to keep it consistent throughout the film, you know, so <laughs> I think I can see how it was the, the right call. Um, yes. Now, now, another question about the material and, you know, very much allowing that, um, you know, this is a question from 2023 point of view, um, you know, something that was striking to me was I felt like what concessions were made by Kathy Bates and Maggie Smith and what apologies such that they were at all were were levied at all were given so begrudgingly and you really they were practically crow you know you practically needed a crowbar <laughs> to get those apologies out of them and I just that you know it, there is clearly redemption at the end and there is sorrow felt toward them but it was I mean from them toward Laura's character but you know from again from a 2023 perspective I see Laura Linney as the unmitigated victim of closed-mindedness and you know in the case of Kathy Bates jealousy and mm -hmm. maybe even a tinge of jealousy even in Maggie Smith's character because she was you know she said this is a disruption of you know the vision that I had for my son um, and, you know, I, I, I felt that Laura Linney was, uh, you know, well, Chrissy, not Laura Linney, Chrissy was, was cheated from, you know, a more, more of a heartfelt apology. Uh, well, that certainly sums it up. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know what I can, can say. Uh, you put it very well. Uh, but uh, are you saying that the, uh, well, I, let's just see. So the grudgingness uh, with which the mm -hmm. apologies were given is what you're, you're, you're yep. talking about. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, when, when they banished her, uh, so to speak, um, 
well, not so to speak. They 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 wanted her out of the way, mm -hmm. and the usual yeah. uh, way would be to, to mother and baby home, uh, which started at that time. At the first right. mother and baby was uh, is the one that's in the in the in the papers now in Tume, Galway. Right. Uh, that was the first one in 1924, 1925. So she would have ended up there or in in London, uh, probably, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or America, and. Uh, in London, it would have been, uh, yeah, there was no way around uh, having a baby uh, unless you went, you know, one of those uh, routes. And mm -hmm. uh, in, if you went into a mother and baby home in Ireland, the baby would probably have been, uh, probably would have died of malnutrition is what we're, lo what we're looking at uh, now, these days, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the history of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of these places, uh, and um, or, or given up for adoption, and uh, quite often mm -hmm. without the permission of the mother. And um, so, uh, so she has. Uh, there's an awful lot to forgive, and uh, and I think that uh, that um, the uh, uh, Kathy Bates and Maggie Smith character uh, have lived with the guilt uh, of that, which I think is just as hard to to live with, um, mm -hmm. because it affects you. It affects you in all kinds of uh, complex ways, and uh, they lived with that guilt, and um uh, buried it didn't know what to do with it and yet that that's probably been driving them putting them into mental uh attitudes mental conditions uh which uh, is are unknown to them and so when uh, when they they see her in front of them and they're confronted with that uh something fundamental is uh is happening there uh, to, to them as characters and uh it did so I think that that would partly explain their reluctance that discovering what guilt really means for the first time mm -hmm. uh, and how awful it is uh, to, to carry that around with you and not even realize that that's what it is um plus uh the the shame of uh, mm -hmm. of uh, of having uh banished her in the first place mm -hmm. so, so I think it's really hard for them uh, yeah. to do that. Right. So the, they're, they're suffering based on their own actions as well. And I and, you know, something that I thought was very, very potent, you know, one of Kathy Bates's um, lines early, very early in the film when Laura Linney first arrives, uh, Kathy Bates says, you know, some, you know, something to the effect. I mean, I'm not quoting it verbatim, but some things we just don't talk about or some things are better not spoken of. And, yeah. you know, to me that that, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I heard, you know, relatives, you know, um, grandparents and uh, great aunts and uncles, you know, li living by that, that view. And, uh, you know, you see, um, you know, you see the damage that perspective does. So that's, uh, yeah, we all, we all come across that. I'm sure we're, we all live it, whether we, whether it's spoken or not. Uh, um, Things are just uh, left to fester, and because uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's just too complicated to to have to um, to go into it. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, if we don't go into it, it will go away in some way. And mm -hmm. of what happens is that it, it it they thought that for many years, and now right. it suddenly landed on them, wearing right. a yellow dress, uh, looking beautiful. Uh, and and I remember Americans coming back uh, from you know in the, in the 50s and 60s. So much of my family went to America, and they they would come back and they would oh, their suits and their money and their, I mean it was so exotic and extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, they walking down the street, people would say to you, you know, oh, I see the Yanks are back. The Yanks, yeah. are, you've got a Yank back, and it was uh, it it was. Uh, and that's why I wanted to get that feeling that yeah. uh, here she comes and really, really make that, um, you know, a, a classic sort of day of sex machina. Mm -hmm. Here comes the trouble. Right, it's, right. It's wearing yellow. And, right. uh, yellow. And it's... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, um, well, th thank you so much for sharing some of your, uh, you know, some of the highlights uh, of your experience with the film and and uh, shedding some light on 
on some of my questions. I really appreciate it. Um, I think the film is very intense, very thought provoking, really, really loved it. I think it's a really interesting film. Um, and I, I, I could keep uh, asking you questions, but I know you have uh, your, you know, your busy um, interview schedule today and I appreciate you're making time for us. Um, but I wish you the best with the opening, um, July 14th, I believe. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for talking to me, yeah. Yeah, so just a couple of weeks after we uh, we screened the film, which is um, June 28th, so still a little bit from today, but uh, wishing you the best with the opening and thank you so much for your time. I think it's a really beautiful film. All right, take Thank care. You. Lovely to talk to you. I enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, same Bye. here. Take care.